always, we just want to welcome all you that are here today. We're excited about what God's going to do today, aren't we? Let's uh, go ahead and start with the announcements. That kind of looked like our practice this morning, didn't it? <laughs> we got a baby over here. So this morning, this is for the kids. We're having a baptismal service. This is all my family that I can see. Uh, there might be more out there somewhere. This is my blood relative, so you'll forgive them. So, but I have a video. So all the kids are in here, right? Where's Jay? They're in here? So kids, I want you to listen to this, okay? This is about baptism, so this is so you understand what baptism is all about, okay? <laughs> You're going to learn, buddy, right here. This is what's going to happen to you today, okay. man. Oh, yes. Now, this is Jesus going to be baptized. So excited. For a long time, people just like you have been able to jump down in the water to show the people around you. Let's start with Jesus. 
Okay, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning. If you would prefer to sit, you can do that too. Oh. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Lord, we accept your gift with open hearts this morning.
like, but uh, use Cindy's mic. Okay. The pulpit's down on the floor. Okay. So this is her, this, I didn't realize this. This is all from Carrie, so we're going to put the pulpit mic up. I don't know, I already cut my hand once today. You sure you want me to touch this pulpit mic? Okay, so speak right in there. They got you turned on. This is what she came and said to me. Well, God just laid it on my heart to pray for Josiah. Um, he's been coming to my house lately and he came over last night again and I hugged him and he hugged me for the longest time and we cried and I told him, I said, I love you, Josiah. And he told me how much he loved me and he just, we just cried and cried and I just now, it just now hit me that God just wants us to pray for him. Amen. All right, do that. You do that. You pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today for Josiah. I know he's hurting. Ah, Father, we take a stand so against bad. his nakedness. He says he wants to change. He needs help, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can, and I know that his parents are. And he just needs, he just needs a hand from you, dear Lord. Just help this this young man to turn his life around. I know that you're there. I thank you for it. We, set, we stand together in the unison for my son, Josiah, Lord. We stand in the prodigals that are running away, who are hooked in addictions, who are hooked in the world's culture, who are bound by sin, who don't understand that, Jesus, you are the one who sets us free. free and the, the one who Christ sets free is free indeed. And so, Father, we pray for all this stuff that kind of tangles us all up and kind of messes us all up, Father. We pray for the work of the Holy Spirit to fall afresh and anew on all of our kids, on all of your kids, Lord God. It's interesting, as I woke up at 3.30 this morning, my son was on my heart, and I prayed to last week, Father, we stop on Satan head in the name of Jesus Christ, and we take authority over this man's life, that, Father God, you would pour out your blood on him, and you would cleanse him, and you would heal him and deliver him. But not just my son, Father, for all of our sons and for all of our daughters, for all of our grandkids, for all of our friends, Father. Come, Lord Jesus, in the move. Come, Lord Jesus, bring revival in our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, bring the church alive. Set us free, Father, to become what you want us to be. Oh, Father, here we are. We're ready to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this is interesting because we prayed, Cindy and I prayed that God would raise up someone who can communicate to my son and that God might use someone in the body of Christ, whether it be this body of Christ, whether it be the body of Christ somewhere else. And it looks like Carrie Hallelujah. is the one that God is using at this Carrie and Will. And so we just give God a hand. Amen. Amen. And uh, and so uh, so you have you have been praying for my family. So my son Nate is here, and his lady and Stephanie and my his their kids, my granddaughter. Hey, where is my granddaughter anyway? She, okay, <laughs> granddaughter number two, where's she at? Okay, lift her up. That's granddaughter number two. So bring her up. Come on up with her, Kalani. You guys haven't got to meet my granddaughter. Uh, I don't think so. But this is. This is granddaughter one and two. This is grandson number one that I know of. So, <laughs> so amen. And so there are my grandkids. Hallelujah. Yeah, there they are. Amen. Look at that, sissy. Look at all those people. Okay, this is my grandson, Jonah. Kim What's your name again? Kaylani Kamira. Kamira. Jonah Kaylani Kamira. Amen? She's like her dad. Okay, just wanted you to meet my kids, right? And, and Nate, is Nate here? Where's, no, the other Nate. No, the other Nate. We prayed for you. That's my son, Nate. This is my nephew, Nathaniel. We prayed for him for cancer, right? Lung cancer. God delivered him. I just want you to see that God does hear our prayer, amen? And so we're thankful for that, amen? And Doug, we Amen. We've been praying for you, and we're, we're still believing for you, man. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So in this church, we celebrate the answers to prayer. We worship and magnify the name of the Lord. This is my brother-in-law, Clay. He doesn't know it, but we've been praying for him. Hand up. We've been, this is Clay. You hear me talk about Clay? This is Clay. You guys, he saying, this is my brother-in-law, Kay. We've been praying for him. In fact, he doesn't know, but I told the men in my Bible study group to say hello to him and that we've been praying for him. All right? So we thank the Lord for all those things. I rejoice. I rejoice in the family of God. I rejoice in what God has done that the world seemed to say was impossible in our lives. I rejoice in the name of Jesus that those who thought we were a lost cause, our God in heaven never thought we were a lost cause. I may have given up hope. I may have lost focus sometimes. But Jesus never lose hope. And he neither, neither does he lose focus of where you are and who you are. He knows your name. Aren't we glad for that? In spite of the Republicans and the Democrats and the Libertarians, our God is alive. And we are here rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of all things. So my family and I, we don't get to worship together very often in the years of ministry and all of the things, but we celebrate that. Each one of them has a story where God has taken them to and where he's brought them from. And if you're interested in it, go ahead and ask them. Some will talk faster than others. Some will want to give you four chapters instead of one. So we just, but we have a story. Do we not have a story? Yes. We have a story. And today the story is about being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's about the church doing what God called us to do. Yes. It's about the church becoming who God wants us to be. Yes. It's about the church being loosened and set free to do the work that the kingdom of God would have us do. Yes. And, you know, he said, go forth and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before he said that, he said, go and make disciples, yeah. right? And so when my grandkids and my friends are dunked under, some I hold longer than others, <laughs> I want you to know, we should celebrate. Yeah. Because these are prayers that have been answered over the years and over the time, and God is still at work, and we're so thankful for that. Someone said, will you baptize children? Yes. Amen. Why not? Why not? I was baptized as a young man, I'm sure, uh, and I was sprinkled, uh, and I'm sure God kept me close because of that. Amen. Sorry, I'm just excited. I'm going to be baptizing my friends. I'm going to be baptizing my grandkids. By the way, these are third generation followers of Jesus Christ Amen. who have each come to their place of redemption and of forgiveness and of healing and of Jesus being their savior. And so we're thankful for that. Amen. Yeah. Sorry, we're deciding what song we want to sing. <laughs> I've decided I I will play this song. Okay. Yes, this is a good song. We practice this song. We should do this. <laughs>
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground. Up from the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, there in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your gift of the son that, that died on our Christ to, cross to set, set us free from all our sin, all our guilt of sin, Lord God. It is not about us and what we do or what we don't do. It's all about you and yeah. what you did on the cross. Yeah. You covered us, Lord yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Father, you accepted us through the blood of Jesus, and we thank you for that. Glory to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus for the sacrifice you made, and thank you for the comforter that comes to lead us every moment, every day. Hallelujah. We praise you today. Amen. Let's sing that holy water one more time as the baptism gets ready. As the men come, if you're listening to me, Don, we're ready to get the baptismal ready. And... Uh, so we're going to sing this song one more time in the presence of the Lord, and we're going to ask the Lord to bless us as we come. And 
uh, I was in this small church uh, not, uh, years ago when I baptized my nephew. It was around about 25 people. And I put my nephew underwater, and when he came up, he just shouted, Hallelujah. And, and that congregation about fell over. They weren't used to that kind of excitement and that kind of joy, but we want you to know that this is about the kingdom of God. Amen. So those who are baptism is yours this morning. We're going to ask the family for each candidate as they come to come and surround them, and we're going to anoint them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? Listen to this song. This is a great song. By the way, aren't they doing a wonderful job? Yeah, man. They never tell me what they're picking either. That, that's kind of scary, really. Come on, you got to stand for this one.
God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We don't need any beer. Information. <laughs> Ask me if I'm going to remember it. Amen. So here we have some rubber duckies and a shark in the water, just for your information. And, and uh, we're thankful for the kingdom of God and what he's done and what he's doing. And we're blessed to have uh, our families here. Um, no, you got to keep them on, yeah, little guy. We're just about getting ready for that. But I want to read something quickly. Hey, I need help up here. Gilbertson, come up here. No. Come on up here and help me. You stay up here, okay? I can't control all this. It's way out of my hands. By the way, you know, I just a little humor before we get started. You know that the trustees tell me that they can't let me have any sharp objects because I always get hurt or any tools. Well, this morning I was cutting the certificates on the paper cutter. Got I got cut. I started laughing immediately because I realized that maybe I shouldn't have been cutting the certificates. I should have got one of you to come and do it. But uh, my son-in-law said he was going to put Kool-Aid packets in my grandson's pocket so that when he went in the water it would turn red. <laughs> so I'm just saying if it's red, it's because it's, it's not Jesus' blood. It might be mine. So... And mine's nowhere near as powerful as Jesus' blood. Amen. Christian baptism is a sacrament signifying participation by faith in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is an incorporation into the body of Christ. So from this point on, we know that all of the baptismal candidates have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I've asked them all individually, except for a few, but I'm trusting that because uh, that's what it's all about. It's about the kingdom of God. For generations since Jesus' baptism in Jordan River, and even before that when John the Baptist was baptizing, we have been called by the word of God to be baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So each one who's going under the water, you listen to me, Jonah? Each one that's going under the water, this is a generational thing. This is from the days of Jesus and the prophet John the Baptist. And so when you're going underwater, it's kind of just like what happened to all of those folks. So you now are going to become and already have because of the blood of the lamb has washed you. Got it, Kehlani? Got it, guys? And here's the deal. We now are going to show the world, and you're being streamed, uh, on the internet, people are going to see this. This is a symbolization of you going under the water, the old man. The old man before Christ. And I listened to one preacher this week. Uh, he's, he's more progressive than I, and that's not always a good word. But, but uh, he said, when we bring them up out of the water, we bring them up dynamically. Because it represents the change that Jesus has done in their lives, right? So when you come up under the, out of the water, folks, we're praying that Jesus will anoint you. The Apostle Paul declares that all who are baptized into Christ are baptized into his death. We are buried with him through baptism so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too will be raised from the dead. Amen? Now, we too are not only raised for resurrection, but we are raised to a new life to a newness of life. We know to be absent from the body, the Bible says, is to be present with the Lord. We know one day that's going to happen. Some of you probably before I. Just saying. And that's not because you're older. It's just the way life goes. But there are some creeds that the early church believed, and so I want to read the Apostle Creed to you. How many of you know the Apostle Creed? If you have any Roman Catholic in you, you should know this Apostle Creed. But if you don't, and I hope the evangelicals caught on years ago, uh, we do in our church teach this. But listen to the Apostle Creed, okay? Why did I say Roman Catholics? I had to learn this. And it wasn't very fun. Uh, but then when I got saved, I realized what it meant. And then it became a joy to me. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church of Jesus Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you be baptized into this faith for those who are the candidates? Say, I will. I will. Louder. I will. There, I heard my granddaughter, so, and my grandson, I'm listening. Amen? Amen. What an exciting time. So, Ken, bring your family, and uh, we want to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, and so we want, his whole family is going to be baptized. So we thank God for this. Amen. Amen. Come on up, guys. Mom and dads, come on up. We want you to surround them as we baptize them. We want you to be a part of this. Come on, sweetheart. Amen. We have a towel. Who? You know, Ken? Do you want to bet? Do you folks, do you want to hold each child, each of you? Or do you want to? It's, we'll do both. I'll do them in there. Okay. Okay. All right. And that, you want to go, you want to go first? Huh? Okay. Okay. And that, is that Henry? Okay, Henry. I, okay, got it. Come on, Henry. Oh. Sorry. So I want you to see this before you get wet and cold. This has got your name on it, right? James Russell Minkler. Listen, this certifies that you was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit today. Okay? So what I want you to do, and Mom and Daddy can help you, wherever you sleep, wherever you have your precious things, I want you to hang this on your wall. And here's what I want you to do. When somebody says that there isn't a Christ, there isn't a God, I want you to remember the day that you did this. Okay. And say, in Jesus' name, I am his. Okay. Let's hear it. In Jesus' name, say it. You can say it. In Jesus' name, I am his. I am born again. I am born again. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Okay, come on in here, buddy. No diving. I'll help you, sweetheart. Come on. It's warm. Is it warm? warm. Praise God. Warm. Yeah, okay. Come turn around this way. Let's have you sit down. Now I'm gonna we might need this done. Can you sit on that? <laughs> Sit on that, brother. Okay. Just sit right down on it. Never mind. Okay. Give me his. James Russell, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put this over so you don't get any water in here. So sit down. Sit down. You ready? Okay, in the name of the Father. Go ahead and sit down. Sit down. I got you. Sit. I got you. Just like a bathtub. Ready? In the name of the Father and the Son, I baptize you. Yeah! We got a towel for you, buddy. Amen? Yeah. Let the little children come on to me. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. You say hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is for him. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, no, we're done. Other, we're we're going to put somebody else in there. You're going to stand by mom and dad. Good job. Nice job. Hey, where does Jesus live? In heaven. In heaven? Where else? Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> okay, that's it. He's all around us. Okay, who's next? Okay, Ken. All right. Good job, buddy. What a come on in, Ken. You can sit down. Can I? Well, I don't know. We'll see if you float up. I'm not helping you. <laughs> So they, they have a story. Ken and I have known each other, what, five, six years? And so they have a story. And folks, you want to come up? Is your mom and dad out there? Yeah. Come on up. No, they're, 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 fine, they're fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kenneth Russell Minkler, in the name of the Father and of the Son, I baptize you. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, so here's a special prayer. In the name of the Father, we pray anointing of the Holy Spirit on Ken. Amen. That there will be a, that he'll be a noticeable anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ken, here's yours. Okay, Catherine. You want to do the baby too, or you want to? I mean, you want to go with him, or you want to do them separate? I can pour, I can dip, I can do whatever you want. Let's do you first, and then we'll hand the baby to you. I guess Ken could get in there too. I'm, is your mom and dad here too? My mom's here. They can come. You can come up. They want to take pictures. Yes. Amen. So we baptize Catherine, Michelle, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah! Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Okay. Praise God. This is Henry. Henry Douglas. Minkler. Hey. So, as we get ready to, to go ahead and baptize the baby, one of the things we say about baby baptism, and that is a covenant between God and the family, and we tell in the mom and the dad and all of the children and all the grandparents that you be responsible to teach little Henry about the things of God. Yeah. What's, that mean, what's that means that you have to be responsible and surrender to God, and you have to teach your child how to live for Jesus, okay? Every Amen. So, if parents are ready for that. Amen. Now, the second part of this covenant is that not only do we have the parents and the family, but we now are bringing a covenant into the fellowship here at Bonnie Lake and every other, but we take responsibility that we too will participate in his upbringing. We will pray. We will seek the Lord for this family and for little Henry, okay? So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father. Would you like me to dunk him or pour him? Okay. Okay, you ready? Put that pacifier down in there, man. Yeah. You ready? In the name of the Father. You want to have your one? In the name of the Father, Henry Douglas, we baptize you into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay. Here you are. We got a tail for you. This is bigger than you are. Here, Bill. Woo! Amen, Catherine. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so before they leave off the platform, you can go to exit that way. We want them to have a testimony. So, so we're going to just a few words, just a few words, what it means to you. The baptism, okay? And we're going to use uh, 
Cindy's mic. Okay, do I need to turn it on or? Can you see that? What? <laughs> don't see anything, buddy. I don't see anything either. Oh, the oh, red, red button. button. Yeah. There you go. Is it on? Testing. It's red light. I think they can hear us. Can you hear us? Forget it. Okay. Okay. So this was important for us to move forward as one family unit in God and Christ. Uh, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Catherine? Same. Um, I've been baptized before, but it's such a unit together as a family. Amen. Starting this family together. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Welcome. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a, we have a, a runner for you. Not literally, but just a cover. Amen. So I've watched Ken a little bit. I just met Catherine yesterday and the kids, but we thank God for all of the work that he's done in, in, in their lives and how faithful our God is. Amen. Uh, so I need to make this announcement. So if you're out there in the sanctuary this morning and God is tugging at your heart to be baptized, well, why not do it today? Okay. Just in case... Just in case we have extra towels, we by faith always know that the proclaiming of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the symbol of baptism, God uses that to speak to your heart. So kids, moms and dads, and this is your opportunity if you feel God doing that. So we invite you to come at this point. Okay? Anybody feel like God wants you to be baptized. Amen. How about you? Okay. We're just going to pause for them. Anybody like that? Okay. Uh, Jonah and Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa. Jonah and Kaylani, come on up. Hey, Vanessa, do you need to be baptized? Uh, do you need to rebaptize? Okay. That's my niece. All right. So. Tell me what brought you to this moment, Jonah. Um, Come over here. You're dry. Speak right to that mic right there. Journaling about Christ and reading the Bible and praying. And I just felt like I should. Amen. Okay. How, many, how long ago? About two years ago. About two years ago. Amen. Okay. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> okay, sissy. Want to say something? Say something. You don't have to. And what brought you to this? I felt like God was calling to me. Okay. All right. And what was he saying? Okay. I'll tell it for you, okay? Well, we were, Jonah was getting baptized, and so grandkids in competition, right? And, uh, but, uh, so she said, I want to be baptized, right, Jonah? And so Jonah says, why does Kehlani have to do everything I do? <laughs> I said, because you're like a big brother. And she looks at you. And you're a spiritual example, right? Yeah. And so what I said, do you know what baptism is? And so we walked through all that, right? Yeah. And she said, I want to give my life to Christ and follow him. For the rest of my life. Jonah, probably a year and a half ago, and I don't say this judgmental or critical, but he, he wanted to be baptized, but a, where he was attending at the time, the folks didn't really feel like he should be baptized because he was a child. And so I said, whoa, wait a minute. And I wasn't aware of that until about, what, three months ago? I said, no, 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 no. If God called you to be baptized, we're going to baptize you. Okay? Okay, okay. We'll let you cover that later. <laughs> his leader of his church said, you should wait till later. Do not wait. Do not wait. Especially in these days. Amen. Okay, who wants to go first? Me. Okay. 
d d <laughs> Family, you can come up. Turn around. I'm a right-hander, so make your head back this way. Okay? Wow, what a privilege, Jonah. What a privilege it is for Papa. What a privilege it is for Papa to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. How exciting I am because I know God has a plan for you just like he has a plan for all of us. And you know what? You just listen to that Holy Spirit and seek after him. Right? Yeah. You ready? Look, yeah. Just look around. Turn around. Look at your family. Right? They're all here. They're all witnesses of what Christ can do. I want you to see that. Okay? Now I want you to look out into the foyer out into the fellowship. I want you to see all these folks. This is all part of the family of God, which you have become because of the blood of Jesus, but we'll always be here for you. Okay? Okay. Turn back around. So Pop's going to put this on you. Okay. Listen to me. Papa, Nana, Mommy, and Daddy have all done this, right? Okay. And all the relatives that are sitting around here, most of them have done this. So you're, okay. you're coming into the kingdom and we're going to disciple you. And you're going to surrender to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you, Jonah and Michael. Yeah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, it's time to get out. Hallelujah! Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Do you want to say anything? Okay, listen. This is, this is a certificate for you. I want you to hang it like I told Ken and his family. You hang it somewhere where it's important to you. And when the evil one or the accuser of the brethren comes yeah. to you and he says nothing happened, you tell him he's a liar because you remember the date. Here it is. Yeah. But more than that, you remember the date you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we know that the one who hates the Father, Son, and Spirit doesn't want us to have anything to do with him either. But greater is he, listen to me. <laughs> Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So God is much bigger than all that, okay? So why don't you take that to your mom and dad, walk down this way. Go this way. What is your lips doing, buddy? Here. Okay, you go sit down, or you can go change. Well, wait, you wait right there for Kehlani. Okay, Kehlani. Come on, parents, grandparents, come on up. Amen. No, I, there are others here. How come you're not coming up here, woman? I can see you up here. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're letting Tutu. I thought I'd seen your mom. Right here. Oh, so get him over here. Let somebody else take that picture, okay? And where's Nate and right, Stephanie? Right. Come on up. Let's do this. Okay? Okay, get in there, baby. You know, here's an important factor. Hey, listen to Papa. Here's an important factor. So did you know that your Papa Bob, did you know he was a minister in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yeah, your Papa was. Your great-grandpa? Did you know that? Assembly of God, right? So see, you, you have this, and in, in, in you have this generational thing happening in your life, not just from Papa and Nana, but from Tutu and from Papa Jesse and from your mama and from your daddy. Your daddy loves Jesus and all of them are serving Jesus. So we're so, what a precious opportunity it is for Papa to baptize you, right? And I'm excited to see how God is going to use you. Uh, and, um, and it's kind of exciting, okay? So I want you to look around. No, not at the rubber duckies. <laughs> I want you to look around. See all your family? Look at, look at, now look this way. See all that? Now look out into the fellowship, into the foyer, or into the, the, look at all them, amen? So, and we know they've been praying for you, right? You know some of them, right? Okay? All right, here we go. Turn around this way, baby. Okay, Papa. Kehlani, Tamara, Balbada, Rip, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, mom and dads, and grandpa and grandmas, you can come up and lay hands on me as we do this, okay? In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah! 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 Okay, do you want to say anything? Nothing? Okay. Tell me. You're baptized. You're now a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? Moms, dads, you want to say anything? Okay. Here's your certificate. Just like I told the rest of them, hang this somewhere important. By the way, we will get a new frame, so don't question it. <laughs> She's my artist, so she'll... But we want you to hang this because we talked about this many times that the enemy would like to come and just lie to you and say that nothing happened, right? But we know that's not true, amen? Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. world. Amen. So you gave your heart to Jesus Christ? How did you do that? Um, I got baptized. No, before you got baptized, you had to do something. What was it? Remember? You had to repent? Repent? Of what? That's okay. She's used to Papa. She knows. She gave her heart to Jesus in the room. But many times she has. She's kind of like us many times, so we're thankful. But I keep reminding her that she has a heritage. Yeah. Right? Jonah has a heritage. Yeah. Ken's family has a heritage. Yeah. And I thank God for that. We, you know, I often pray for Papa, great-grandpa that you hardly know, Bob, because I'm reminded of how the enemy would like to destroy. So you have great Christian heritage in your family. Amen? Yeah. Plus, seeing a minority. She's got, she's got Samoa, Samoro. Samoro, Hawaiian, Russian, I don't know, <laughs> German, Irish. If anybody needs to get a tax break, she does. <laughs> the same, okay? All right. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Amen. 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 Okay. Hey, what time is it? Did you, <laughs> did you say that, Dennis? <laughs> I knew it. I want to talk to you just quickly about the kingdom of God, okay? I just want to give you an encouragement. Because as we go through this whole process with the family, and as we go through this baptism, there's a high responsibility of the kingdom of God on our hands. Amen? But I want you to know, no earthly power can destroy the work of God. No earthly power, no earthly kingdom will stand forever, but the kingdom of God will stand forever. And church, this is the day that God has brought us into to come alive and to be loosened, to become the light in the darkness. This is a time as we raise these young families and as we raise these young kids, this is a time that we teach them and train them and equip them for the kingdom of God's work. Amen. And we have a responsibility to do that. But more than that, adults, it's time for you to humble yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender your life with all your junk and let Jesus take it and come back and anoint you with the precious anointing of the living God so that he can use you in places you can't imagine. This week I had someone come who's a business gal and I've, we've been buying coffee for her, and she's a Christian, but her husband had a knee replacement, wasn't doing so well. She came, and I just laid hands on her and prayed for her in the name of the Father and the Son, right? And then I talked to her about some classes that we're having at church. It's exciting when you have a church that's doing some things for the kingdom of God, and you're actually excited to tell people about what's happening in your church. Well, man, you guys are like, maybe it's just me. I don't know, but, but I'm thinking, man, you got to come. It's not too far to come from Woodland. I'm just saying, isn't it good to be in the kingdom of God? And I hope that you do not leave this morning if you have not repented of your sins and asked Jesus Christ to become your Savior. I hope and pray that you would not go out of this sanctuary this morning without knowing that Jesus saves.
I hope and pray that you would not go out of this sanctuary without knowing that our God is alive. He's alive. Turn off the news. Get in the Word of God. Get into the presence of God. Stop listening to the naysayers. They've been around from generation to generation. The religious leaders in Jesus' day, they were naysayers. They killed Jesus. All because he brought the truth and they didn't like the truth. So if you think it's just the politicians that are struggling, it's not. Do not be deceived by hypocrites. But come alive with Jesus Christ. Now as soon as I say that, some of you are saying, well, I know that hypocrite, and I know this one. No, but if you're not where you need to be and you need to repent, repent. Take the mask off. Ask Jesus Christ to become your Savior. And if you already know him, just surrender. Amen? What would I say? What would Jesus do right now after we just baptized his children? What would he do? Can you imagine in heaven? They're rejoicing. It's like, wow, this has been going on for generation after generation after generation. And people want to stop it, but God's kingdom is not going to be stopped. Amen. So we're thankful for that. Amen? Amen. And I want to tell one last story, and then we're going to pray, because we got some issues that we need to pray about. And I talked to this gentleman this week, and he had been in a church uh, and he kind of, they because of COVID, they couldn't worship and they couldn't do things. And he said, you know, Steve, he said, I'm kind of getting discouraged. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting discouraged. Said, when you say you're getting discouraged, can you kind of explain that to me and what you mean? Because there's lots of different levels of discouragement. He says, I'm getting discouraged spiritually. And I said, why? Well, I need to gather in the name of Jesus. There's something about the holy gathering of God's people. Amen? Amen. Well, I said, I don't know what church you went to. I didn't ask him, didn't want to know. I said, but we're open. We're open. Others are open. But you come, become a part of us, and let us pray and encourage you. Amen? Do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Zoom is okay. It works to some degree. But there's nothing like the gathering of God's church. I said this a thousand times. This is for my family. If it were not the case, the Chinese Christians would not risk dying for their faith to gather. When the government tells them they cannot do it, they do it anyway. And so there's something about the holy work of God that unites the fellowship of the kingdom of God. And I know for one, without the church, I don't know where I'd be. Without each and every one of you, I don't know where I'd be. And some of you drive me crazy. And I, I drive you crazy. But we're still in the kingdom of God. Amen. Love you. Pray for you. And as we close, Mike Benjamin is in the hospital with emergency surgery, triple bypass. Uh, on a ventilator right now, uh, it's, he's in what the nurse said to me was stable, unstable. I don't know what that means, but he's stable, unstable. So we want to pray, pray for Mike Benjamin. Amen? Amen. Then we want to pray uh, for Dan Engelbert, who's kind of uh, Seth and Jay's, Jay's father-in-law, Seth's dad, had a stroke yesterday, and they had to go in and take a blood out. And he's going to be in 48 hours in the ICU in Spokane. So I want to pray for him. Amen? Amen. Uh, we also have uh, somebody else. Joe Liebert used to pastor here years ago, was a part of this church years before I came, and I know Joe. He's had brain surgery, and he's at for, in for a long recovery, and they have a uh, GoFundMe account. Uh, we probably will participate in that as a body of Christ. Uh, we'll probably wait till next week to do that, but we pray for those three men. Is there anybody else that I'm missing? Yes. Fred. Fred Harry. Harry? Okay. 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 Hey Amen. Maybe we should make a visit with a couple of us to lay hands with you guys. Can we do that? Think. Let me know. Well, where's he at? 
Oh, let's pray right now for Harry. Lord God, we come against this darkness that has surrounded him. Father God, we know wherever the darkness is, there the light is. And the Bible says where sin aboundeth, there much more grace. We don't understand all that, Lord. But you're going right now to Harry's room and to his wife's room, and you're going to anoint him and you're going to touch him because where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And so here we are seeking your will to be done and for your anointing on Harry. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray for Michael, Benjamin. Father, it doesn't sound good as they took the veins out of his legs. They weren't that good. But God, we know a God who can heal all things. You said, I have not changed. I'm the same as I was yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we know there are false doctrines that say that, but we know, God, you're on the throne. And so touch Mike in Tacoma General right now and bless the nurses as we have a multi-care nurse here today. We ask you to watch over them and take care of them. We ask you, Father, for those who are in there and families cannot see them, we pray, Lord, that you would touch their family. But more than that, those who we lift up who are sick, heal Mike. Heal Dan. Deliver on them, them clear lane, blood flow, and the heart that's damaged with Mike, Father. God, repair the damage and allow the blood to flow and awaken him, Father, and keep him safe. We'll give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Terry? Yes. Always our children. Amen. Okay. Yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember her. Okay. Okay, so we come for Teresa now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray healing into her body. We pray that the kidneys will come back. I've heard that and I've watched the kidneys come back, but it comes back supernaturally. And so we pray for that. We pray, Father, as everybody seems to think the end is near, we pray that, first of all, you would deliver unto her deliverance for victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. That she be born again. And if she is born again, that you'll keep her safe. And if you choose to take her home, we'll give you praise and honor. But we want to keep her here just a little longer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yes. Yes. Dwayne. And yes, Dwayne. Dwayne and Pat, we've been praying. Pat has cancer. Dwayne is not doing very good in Alaska. He's kind of, since they did surgery, he's crippled. Paralyzed, Paralyzed from the waist down, right? Too much. Okay. And I know that Al has shared the gospel with him. Amen. And I know he knows about Jesus. We want him to know Jesus. So we pray for Dwayne right now. Father God in heaven, that you will speak to Dwayne in Anchorage. Lord, that you'll move on his heart and you'll lift him. Father, we anoint in the name of Jesus that you would cleanse his body, heal those, the back, the organs, the, the, the paraplegic kind of thing that's going on there. Lord, we just pray that you would calm the nerves down and deliver him some feeling back. But more than that, we pray for his soul, that he would know that you are his Savior no matter what happens, that when he takes his last breath on this side of glory, he will be with you. We pray for Pat. My friend, who father has cancer, second time around, we come against that C word, Father God. We know doctors are doing everything that they can, but we pray, God, that the great physician would come and would heal and deliver on to Pat. Victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, Edie. Okay, Sonny, you know what? Can you pray for him? I, I just feel like God just said, let Sonny pray for him. So you know all about that, right? Okay. Mm. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, Father. Don? Yes, I'll pray for Mark. I took my mask off. 
Well, you don't have to take it out for me. I can hear you. Okay. Just speak clearly. Okay. Man. I would like for you to pray for me. I'll be seeing this walk to Mike in conference today. And I would like for you to pray for me. Okay, Father, here we are, and we're doing this for the kingdom. We're doing this for the work, and, and we're doing this in Mark's honor. But more than this, we're doing it to honor you, Lord, and all that you do. So we pray that you'll keep Don safe. We pray that you'll give him the strength to finish the task. We pray that you'll give him wisdom and we pray for the finances that he's trying to raise for in Mark's honor. Lord, we pray for his spouse that's sitting back here for Maxine. Lord, that you'll watch over and keep her safe, Father God. You've become her husband since Mark is in glory. And so we pray for her safety, for her insight, and for her wisdom. But more than that, her joy, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray for Shirley's uh, son-in-law, Mark. He needs a miracle. Father, he needs new organs. He needs all kinds of things done in his name. In your name, we pray for Mark. And Jesus Christ, do the work we ask in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Father, here we are. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we anoint our sister that you would surround her with your presence, Lord. No man, no woman, no child can keep as close as you can, Father. And what we pray, Holy Spirit, and the Son of the living God and the great God of all the universe, that you would surround her and keep her safe, that you would keep her in your presence, you would keep her in your midst, and you would surround her with friends who would be able to communicate. And as she's going through counseling, grief counseling, we pray that you give those who understand and give her peace, we ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, so she's going in for a biopsy, right? Yes. Okay, I thought that already happened. No. In the name of the Father, we pray against this breast cancer. If it is, we pray against the biopsy. Lord, that it'll be nothing. Jessica, would you come over here and pray? And so we just pray in the name of Jesus that you would remove it. Amen. So my daughter knows how to pray for that. Dear Lord, I just come before you, God, and I pray that you go into the room with her, Lord, as she's getting this procedure, mm. Lord, and that you remind her that you are right there in every moment and every yes. step, God, that you are in control of every cell in our body, God, that Hallelujah. you are the final authority, Hallelujah. the final yeah. Savior, yeah. and I pray yeah. that you cover her from head yes. to toe with your spirit, mm -hmm. that you will have no fear, Lord, that yes. you will take her anxiety, mm. Lord Jesus, and that you'll drop it out, mm. Lord Jesus, that you'll just feel your peace as she goes into this, mm. this walk that you have before her, Lord, you are aware of it, you have allowed it, and I just pray that you just show up, God. You do, and you, that you will, and so she'll feel you, Lord. Yes. And, and we pray that it is nothing, God, that you destroy it before she even goes yes. in, Lord. Amen. And we ask for your healing, God. In yes. your name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I think I just got you wet. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Rebecca, if you haven't heard the good news, what they thought was cancer is not cancer. She has some tumors, so we... That's good news, and Rebecca Brown, and so we're praying for Don's uh, daughter, that, and most of you know, the older one's been here, because Don, she used to come here, right? Been there? In Jesus' name, we pray for Rebecca, that God would deliver on a complete bill of health, amen? Uh, we know that she's facing surgery that will take all of her womanhood out. We ask you in the name of Jesus that you would protect that and guide that and keep her safe, amen? And those of you who've had that process, you know how to pray, amen? Thank you for Rebecca. Thank you for her kids. Thank you for re reunction. Just a second. I hear and I'll come back to you, Ted. Yes. Okay. She went in to have some of the treatments for her eye. Um, she started having high 
blood pressure and heart problems. And so they had to have her in the hospital to take care of that so they can, and they can't see her now until the end of March. Wow. If all this is better, then they can start the treatment. Wow. Okay, Father, we remind ourselves of Dee. We know her. We haven't seen her for years, but she loves you, her and her husband. She loves you. She's served you for years. And we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ, and we stomp on that sickness. We stomp on it, Father, with the blood of the Lamb and the cleansing power and the purity of your blood that flows from your stream. Father God, sweet honey on our lips. And we pray into that family that you will heal these things and that there would not need to be any treatment. That it will be just cleansed and taken care of. And as she takes care of all these others passionately, we pray that you would give her and surround her with people who have the same kind of passion to minister your grace and your love to them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ted? Buff? Buff? Okay. Okay. I remember that now. Okay, let's do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray for Buff and Barb. Lord, we pray that you would go into that room where Buff is, and we know he suffers from dementia also. We pray, Lord, for this gentle giant, that you would move in there, Father God, and that he would see the hand of God like he's never seen the hand of God before. Lord, we pray that he would be touched, and he would, if he doesn't know it, we'll make sure we tell him that the living God has touched you. And so just like we prayed for Stan, and God, you brought him back to life. We lift our hands to Buff, to Mike, to Dan, to Dee, to Mark, to to um, all the to to Maxine, to to the others that we prayed for. We lift holy hands because you have made them holy. For we are unholy without you. And so we lift holy hands, cleansed by the blood, pure heart. Amen. Amen. Clean hands. Here we are, Lord, because you have washed us. So we lift all these prayer requests to you. Our children, our children's children, we lift them up to you, Father. We pray against addiction. We pray against sickness of all kinds, Father God. We pray that you would be the center of our table in our lives. We pray for our friends and family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus Christ. Amen. I need to see the board up here for the board of directors for just a moment.